You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. And so as I record this, we are, I am live at the Summit for uh, Prosperity Economic Advisors, so I'm very excited. Um, And on the second part of our show, I've got a special guest uh, who's going to talk about his uh, new book called The N1 Asset and uh, Caleb. So Caleb is going to bring on a little bit later and it's it's powerful because he's only 22 years old and he is crushing it as an advisor, advisor. So it's very inspiring to me. But what's exciting here is, you know, we talk about your, you know, your number one asset is you. So you've got to invest in your mindset, your skill set and your network. So, you know, really, you know, your relationship capital, who you know. And so here I'm able to connect with a lot of brilliant people. Um, and there, uh, I had a gentleman just show me how I could help people literally double, almost triple their returns. Uh, by using our, you know, the, our, the money for life or the permanent life insurance system to supercharge their real estate investing. So you're going to, you know, I got around, I can't recreate it right now, but it is, uh, very powerful, the stuff that you can do. And that's the thing, the new stuff that you learn. So if you hear plates breaking down, breaking down dinner, the, um, or lunch actually. And, uh, so that's powerful, but well, folks, You've got to invest in yourself, right? You know, I'm out here. It was not free to get out here, but I look at when I come to workshops like this, an investment in my number one asset, which is Curtis, because I've, you know, what happens is income follows value, right? And so you've got to be able to create more value in the marketplace. So your income is in direct proportion to the value you bring to the marketplace. And so what I always strive to do is become more valuable. How can I serve more? How can I serve more better? How can I create better results uh, for my clients, better strategies for my clients? And, you know, in your respective industries or jobs, what are you doing to get better so that you can create more revenue into your personal economy, right? Who do you know? Who can you collaborate with? And so, you know, because remember our formula, it's it's get money, uh, bank it, borrow it, spend it, repay it. But let me simplify that is get money. So you've got to, whether it's improving your marketing, whether it's, I'm going to have somebody on talk about negotiating salaries, you know, power of negotiation, but you got to get money. You know, if you're in business or you're a real estate investor, how can you create more velocity and do more deals? How can you 10 extra business or two extra business, whatever, um, and work on your profitability so that you can get it? Then you got to keep it, right? So keep it. You know, where do you store your cash? So here we're all, it's all about, you know, you learning to be your, the bank because, you know, when you, <laughs> when you get paid is going into somebody's bank. And then what you're doing is you're giving control of the banking function away. And what people don't really understand is that how much money you're giving up by doing that. Right. And, um, and then you got to grow it and see. So grow it, grow it is investing. Right. But, you know, most people think the key to growth is to create better investments that pay a higher rate of return. So the one we talk about first is becoming efficient. You know, there's more opportunity. You heard me say this than to minimize the losses in your life than there is to try to pick winning investments. But so you want to start with that because a penny saved is a penny earned. But now we talk about growing it. And I'm going to, br- I've brought you some of these people on the, on the podcast before, but we're going to, you know, keep showing you, you know, alternatives to Wall Street. You know, how can you generate, you know, an asset is something that puts money in your pocket today, right? So how can you generate cash flow? How can you generate growth? You know, safe things that don't correlate with the market, things where you don't, you know, you, you can create leverage where you don't have to use all your money. It's safe. You don't have to worry about, you know, some, you know, event happening that's going to, you know, decimate your portfolio. How do you create, uh, uh, more certainty, more cash flow in your life so that you can sleep at night? So you can live the best life you can today. So you can enjoy your family today. So you can, uh, take the trips that you want to go on today. 
right? So that's that's kind of what I'm gonna share with you uh, today. I'll probably <laughs> actually, I'm, uh, hopefully, I'm gonna record to get a, a punch of people. I'm going to sideline today, pull them aside. So listen, I want you to share some great information with our audience. So stay tuned, and we're gonna come back with a great interview. And so I want you to stay tuned for part two. All right. Hey, guys, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. So the, we're going to bring on part two. And I told you I had a special interview with uh, Caleb Gilliams. Close, Williams. Williams. <laughs> forgive me. And uh, so this guy is a powerhouse uh, advisor. And so I'm very excited to um, to uh, and we met two last year, Correct. last yeah. year at the. Uh, the prosperity, the summit. As we record this, if you hear background noise, we're in a hallway. <laughs> uh, but we're recording this. But this gentleman has got a book out. He showed me. He said, Harris, I guess I got a book out. And I says, listen, my listeners have got to hear this. And the book is called The And One Asset. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I want you to tell us about that. But first, I want you to give me a little background. Right. Uh, and tell us, tell, tell us about yourself, you know, when you started you so, know, so 10 years ago or something, right? right, now. right. And, uh, and uh, you know, what you're up to, what what brought you into this and, and what, what, what brought on the book? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show, Curtis. I have a ton of respect for you, your practice and what you're doing on your podcast. So oh. it's a true honor to be here. Uh, thank you. Uh, usually the first question that people ask when they see me is like, hey, I, I didn't know a 15 year old could, right. there. <laughs> could uh, give financial advice and 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 really, I have a, a, a cool story because uh, I would not be here if it wasn't for the experienced people that took me under their wing. Right. So at at uh, my my really the job, my first job was gutting chickens. Okay. <laughs> uh, at 15 years old, and, and it was just a cool experience because you go to work and not no one wakes up and they're like, I want to work on a farm. And but but it taught me the value of money. Right. And so at a young age, I started growing this passion for leadership and money and entrepreneurship. And so I, I just, I got a book. It was called The Richest Man in Babylon. Right. And it was just this, this like fascination that our money could work for us. This is at 15. This is at 15 years okay. old. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I, I kind of made a commitment to myself that I, if I, if I truly, truly wanted to dedicate myself to truly helping people when it comes to having their money work for them. At the age of 17, I got a job at a local bank, learned a lot about relationships, learned a little bit about banking, learned a lot about just, how to talk to people. What were you doing at the bank? I was a teller. Okay. So, okay. And this is, this is, I, and for those of you that like know That's 17. Me, yeah. Okay. So I'm a big relationship guy. Okay. I, I sat down with a, a, a guy that was the head of the bank and I was, you know, talking the big talk and wanting to know what I should do for college and yada, yada, yada. And he's like, young man, you need to get, you, you need to get some experience. I'm like, okay. And so he takes out his phone. We're at IHOP. Okay. And he calls the bank. He's on the board and gets me a job. Wow. So again, I'm at, at 17 years old. I'm like, okay, your your network right. is in your network. Right, right. We were at a meeting with Garrett Gunnarsson, and he just talked about relationship capital. 100. percent yeah. yeah. And so I worked at that bank for four and a half years, and during that time, I try to meet people. I'm, I'm you know just trying to network in in my community. And at the age of 18. I get to start working in our investment department. Okay. And Curtis, I thought wow. I, I thought I arrived. Okay. I, I had 18, Caleb investment Williams, right. Williams okay. investment assistant. Wow. And I, and I just thought I, I just made it. Um, and I also started going to school full time. So I had that. I was doing a little bit of marketing for the bank. Okay. Um, but then my life truly changed because at, at the age of 19, the, the, the gentleman that was running our investment department at the time took another job. Okay. So at 19 years old, I took over the bank's investment department. Wow. And so, um, which was probably a, a huge mistake on the bank's part, <laughs> but, uh, but the bank CEO, who's like a second father to me, he, he took me under his wing and he said, Caleb, I know you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how, how much, much you, you care. care. Mm-hmm. But I also know that you're going to do everything you can to help in others. And so I made a commitment on that day that I was going to truly do whatever I could to help our clients. But selfishly, I want to know how money works. Right. So I took. Two and a half years. What's really unique about my story is I really didn't sell. I was reading Think and Grow Rich right. by Napoleon Hill. He dedicates majority of his life to truly learning. Right. 
And so I was like, what if I could do that in money world? Mm. I look like I'm 12. Right. You know, who's not going to help me? Right, you right, know? Right. And so, and so, so I you start out with, I need your help. <laughs> yeah. I listen, it's funny. I train on that. I tell people, listen, when I got into business, I was 20, right. 20 or 21. I love that. And I was in college and, and I would start out with, you know, with people, I need your help. You know, I, I don't know mm-hmm. if you'd be interested in what I'm doing, but I'd love to share it with you and see if you give me a little bit of direction. Right. And nobody ever said no to that. I nobody. Know. I can't I can't think of a no, I'm not gonna help you. You're crazy, get out of my face. Right. Nobody does that. So continue. I'm sorry. The the greatest compliment we can actually give someone is ask for their help or ask for their opinion. Absolutely. And so it's not like it's not like I'm trying to take from someone. I'm actually like in a way helping them create more legacy. Yes. Because there's you know, and so I'm gonna get I yeah. wanna go down okay. that path. Okay, right, right. Um, but so so I, I'm like learning all this stuff. Right. And and at twenty one, you know. Super experienced and old age. In my right. old age of 21, I realize that if people know what you and I know about money, yeah, there's going to be a line outside the door. Yeah. Like, like, and th- this conviction because, because I truly started to get it. Like I, I went to training. I, I started learning from people and like I understood why and okay. how these things work. And so I am like, okay, if people understand what we know, there's going to be a line outside the door. And so I, I really am like, okay, so what am I going to do about it? You know, I, I graduated college a year early and I, I had a, I had it set, right? Right. I, I was working and running our investment department and I could have just, you know, let people come to me, but, but, but that wouldn't have satisfied me. Right. Like that okay. was not playing into my why. I made a mission statement and it was, it was the following is to help people see and reach their highest potential. I like that. I love that. And, and, and I realized that people, are not, they don't do what we, what we're doing with money because they don't know. They don't know. No, they don't. I mean, most people are unfortunately financially illiterate. Right. You know, um, and I tell people just, you know, we, we cater kind of our, our talk, you know, to African American community. And I've heard George Frazier say this is that the number two problem in African American community is financial illiteracy. The number one is lack of men in the household. But yep. I tell yep. you, look, I can't help you with one. Right. But the, my mission in business and the mission of my show is to do everything I can do with help with two because I can solve something with that problem. But do you agree if, if two's solved, number one would Listen, be Listen, let me tell issue. you something. There's, there, if you get the money thing right, a bunch of other stuff will fall into place. If you get your mindset right, a bunch of other stuff will fall into place because Jim Rohn says most people don't have a money problem. They have a philosophy problem. I 100% agree. You know, and yeah. so we have their philosophy about money's evil or this and, I, you know, I, I, mean, I I go down that rabbit hole too. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but uh, um, especially with millennials. Right. So so that's refreshing. Right. That you get it. <laughs> that, that, you know, you got to create value in the marketplace first. And your whole thing is about learning and about giving. Right. Because there should be a line around the door if they knew what we knew. Right. And so that's why we're doing this. So right. we can, you know, we can educate them. But let's go ahead. Continue. So, please, that's so, awesome. so at 21, I kind of make a commitment to myself that if we're truly going to make a difference, we need to be proactive. Right. And, and it, for those, for your listeners, proactiveness is one of the things that my parents taught me mm-hmm. that I am so grateful for. They didn't teach me much about money, mm-hmm. but they taught me to be proactive, which led me to learn from people like you and to connect with people like you. And you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, yes. so, so I realized that, okay, what's one of the best ways that we can, you know, pass this on. So I have a company just like yours right. that we do education online and we work with people online. But I also thought, what if we could write a book? Mm. And what if this book could be like, I, I learned from a lot of people and, and quite frankly, one of the problems in our industry is we have a lot of knowledge and we really suck at passing it down. Right, right, right. You know, because right. it's like we have all this financial jargon. Right. And so, so you know, I can go into the book and kind of what. Yeah, I'll, let's talk about the book. So the book is really, there's, there's three pillars okay. that, I, that I learned when I'm, when I'm learning from people about money. The first pillar is on efficiency. Okay. Okay. Now, efficiency doesn't sound super sexy. You know, but efficiency at, at its at its purest point is truly um, what what make like what helps everything get better. Yeah. You know, yes. and so I define it as minimizing losses in our life and maximizing compounding and control. Yes. And if you can be more efficient, if you can minimize all the things that are dragging you down and you can understand the power of compound interest, and you can take control of your money. Curtis, watch out. <laughs> Dude, you preached to the choir. Yeah. I have to tell you. Yes, that's so, exciting. Yeah. So then the second Because it's like, it's, it, it even simply put, a penny saved is a penny earned. 
Right. Right. So we say it's more opportunity minimizing the losses in your life than just trying to pick winning investments. So you right. start with efficiency. Stop right. giving your money away. Correct. Correct. The, the second pillar is compound interest. Mm. Now, I don't think Albert Einstein actually said this, but he's noted for saying right, that compound right. interest is the eighth one of the world. And he goes on to say that he who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. Yes. And the sad reality is you, very few people are earning compound interest. But even more people, I think, are doing things that are even killing their the, what any chance that they have from compound interest because of paying other people. Interest. Right, right. And the four things that are truly hurting your ability to earn compound interest. Let me define compound interest. This is and, and the important thing. And I listen to your podcast. Okay, it's the word uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. Yes. Powerful things happen when you can let your dollars grow, and it's a passive strategy, but grow for the rest of your life. But the reason why most of your listeners will never get it if they don't understand this stuff is because of taxes, yep. because of losses, yep. because of fees. And the fourth one is is not being taught very much, but use. Yes. So if if someone's trying to get lifetime compound interest and they're, they have potential tax problems and they're inefficient with it, right. or if they have losses, or they're having percentage-based fees, or if they're going to use that money someday, you realize that the whole financial community, the typical financial advice is to save up your money and then spend it. Right. We're disrespecting the eighth wonder of the world. Right. And so right. I, I'm just, I'm simply saying, you know, compound interest is this amazing thing, but you wouldn't think it because none of us are getting it. Right. We're on the paying side of interest. We don't, we right. are now on the receiving side. Right. Right. <laughs> but okay. So a lot of people stop there. Yeah. And if, if all that my book was on is just, okay, be more efficient and become, and just learn the compound interest. That's like what everyone else is writing about. Right. And what I, what I really discovered in working with people is the secret to building wealth is understanding control. Come on now. Yes. And, and the institutions, the people that are really winning financially understand that control is far more important than compound, compounding and efficiency. And the ironic thing is when you fully have control, you're maximizing your compound interest and you're being efficient in every area possible. Okay. And break, so break that down for my yeah, audience. So, yep. so really, so really control it and, and you got to think short term and long term. And so in the book, we're kind of looking at two areas. Let's look at first long term control. Okay. Things that are things people are um, doing things with their money and they're giving up total control. For instance, right. what's the taxes going to be in 30 years, Curtis? <sighs> Who knows? I don't think they're going to be lower though. Right. So why are we putting our money in accounts? That are postponing, postponing the tax. So, so the tax deferred, calculation. you mean really means postponed. We're not taking responsibility right. of our That's dollars. That's right. That's right. And we're kicking it down a, a road, and one stroke of the pen could eat up half of that. Right. Another right. area of control is we're we're putting money in account. We're investing in companies that we don't understand. We're giving up total access to that. Yep. And we get penalized for touching our money. Right. And so I have a chapter, and it's actually on banking. And bank, the institution of banking is the most profitable business in the world. I worked four and a half years at a bank and I didn't know this. Right. How, when I ask people, how do banks make money? And you probably know this because you, right. you and I learned from the same people. Right. But they just control your money better control, than you right, and I. Right, right, right. Because people, because I'll ask people that and go, well, they invest this. Says, no, they don't invest it. No. They don't invest money. No. And um, they loan out money to other people, but whose money are they loaning out? Right. So if, so if you're, if you're taking notes, this is, this is really profound. I, this is something that I, I can't take much credit for, but in learning from people, I, okay. So the five areas that banks make money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Un, number one, they understand flow. Flow. They, they are in, I mean, they get our money before we do. Right. <laughs> how, how, yes. how, how convenient. Flow. Cash flow. So, okay. so no, I mean, I'm just talking about the flow, flow. of money okay. coming, coming, coming in. Okay. Right. The, the second thing. So when is, you use yours, you would, so, when you get paid, it's going into somebody's right. bank. Direct deposit. Right. Direct deposit. Boom. They're, into somebody else's bank. Right. So you're renting the banking function, as Nelson totally. says. Right. Okay. Totally. Nelson Nash, the, right. our, our both our mentors. Yes, right. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. the, the second the second thing is understanding the power of liquidity. Okay. Because they have access to money, guess where everyone comes when they have an idea? To the, the bank. They're not they're not going out and like trying to convince you to start a business. Everyone's coming to them because they have all the money. Right. The second, the third thing is they understand the power of collateral. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not taking risks. So they're, they're using your money right. <laughs> and they're not taking risk with it. 
And then the fourth area, and people get so emotional about this, but I think this is so profound, is they understand how to use leverage. But they understand how to use leverage with collateral so they're not taking much risk. Right. And Curtis, when you give me $100 and let's say I'm the bank, right. okay, and I give you a percent because I'm super generous, right. you get a dollar. Okay. Then they loan it out to do someone, right. okay, at four, four percent. Right. You know, we, we think, okay, they're earning three percent. Oh, they're no earning, big deal. Earning three percent. What's the big deal? They're earning 300 percent. Right. <laughs> because their cost of that money, they're, they're taking your money. They're controlling your money and their investment is that one dollar of interest. Now, again, is that an extreme example? Absolutely. There's an overhead and yada, but like they understand leverage. And then finally, to kind of summarize all this is they, they understand the power of velocity of money. That means they're using it multiple times. They're, they're understanding that, okay, flow is only important if you're going to use it. Right. Liquidity is only important right. if you're going to take advantage of right. it. And so they're using the idea of velocity and taking full control over their money. And, and so institutions and people that understand how banks make money, instead of saying, Oh, let's, let's go screw the banks. Right. Why don't we be take be proactive and say, what if we could take what the banks are doing and do it ourselves? Right. Apply it to our personal economy. Hundred yep. percent. Yeah. Because what you're saying, see what people think, if you just stopped at the first one, if those who understand interest earn it, those that don't pay it. And right. because you'll never win focusing on accumulation and compound interest. I 100% that's that's agree. that's the big lie. And so you have to learn how to do the five things you just talked about. Most importantly, creating velocity. 100%. One of the ways I illustrate that, if you listen to the language of wealthy people, watch Shark Tank. Mr. Wonderful. What's the first thing he wants to know? How soon can I <laughs> get my money, money back? back? <laughs> right? You know, yeah. so he can do what? Is, that investment is still going on, throwing off cash flow, but now he's got his money back so he can put it into another deal. And then right. he gets that money back. And it's the same money. It's hot. See, we, we don't have money. We have currency. Currency's got to flow. Correct. Right. And so velocity is the key. Keep right. Go on. You, so, you're, and, you're, and so you're, really, I, I love this. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's, it's dangerous. We're both right. extroverts. Right. We, we're, we're in a microphone. Um, but here's, here's the like, so my, the book is called The And Asset. Mm -hmm. And it, the secret way to how to save your money and use your money at the same time. That's, that's really, really powerful. But let me take a step back because it's easy to get focused on money. Right. But Curtis, you're your greatest asset. Right. Your ability to think and provide value to the world is your greatest ability. The people, your listeners, they have to understand that they are their greatest asset. Right. And whatever they do with their money, they need to make sure that they're investing in themselves and not putting their money in a place that's not going to back up their number one. Right. Like their number one asset. Right. Exactly. The that number, is so well put. Yeah. The number one problem in typical financial planning is we're teaching people that they are not their number one asset by showing them how they take money and put it in other people's business. Right. That you don't know, control. that you don't have any control, that you don't understand. Right. I tell people in so many words, most of the typical, when we say typical, because we are traditional, right? Right. And the typical advice you see on TV from the financial entertainers or, or the, the, the mass of advisors out there, Wall Street, um, most, basically you could pull all their advice down into, into this one sentence. Give your money to us. And, and you, and what's hilarious is, Every, they're, everyone's providing some kind of value. And so the, the ironic thing is they're providing you some kind of interest. And what are they doing with your money? Creating velocity. They're controlling it. Controlling it. Yep. And, and it's like, wow, that's, that's very interesting. So it's, a, yeah, we could go down. It's right. And so, you know, cause the thing is, it's like, listen, you gotta, they, they tell you to do one thing, but they do the, the really complete the opposite. complete opposite. Right? right. And so, but those, strategies work in personal finance. Correct. And that's what we both are, are teaching people. Right. So that's fantastic. So, so the second part of the book, because, because mm -hmm. it's easy to say, okay, be more efficient, understand the power of compound interest and control your money. Right. But if we're not going to give people like, okay, Caleb, like, great. What do I do next? Right. Exactly. And, and the, this, the second part of the book is, okay, understanding the controlled compounding strategy. Controlled compounding strategy is nothing that I came up with. It's just a name for the principles that I've learned. Right. And it's the process that we help the people that I work with kind of go through. And it's all about controlling your money today okay. and in the future. And at the same time, mm -hmm. using the power of compound, uninterrupted compound Compounding. interest. Mm -hmm. And we actually in the book talk about lifetime compound interest. Okay. Okay. So what's the value if I can show you where to put your dollar in a place that's going to grow the rest of your life? And you have the ability to invest in your number one asset or in other opportunities or to use to 
you know, spend more time right. with your family. Right. What's the value of using $1 in multiple places? I would say that's priceless, but it's, it's very valuable. Right. Yeah. And so we're so caught up on, Caleb, what's the rate of return? Right. What's the rate of return? So one thing I'm actually really proud of is, um, I talk about an ideal financial, you know, investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, we don't have time to go into all of it, but what I'm doing is I'm, I, I listed out the 16 benefits. Everyone's talking about one benefit, rate of return. Rate of return. Mm -hmm. And rate of return is one of them. But I, but we have to really lay out 16 benefits and ask the question, what's the rate of return of X? What's the rate of return of having safety? Mm -hmm. What's the rate of return of being able to leverage your savings? What's the rate of return of having your money grow tax free? Right. What's the rate of return of having guaranteed? Like, and we have to ask ourselves, like, and, and ultimately we have to look at that 16 benefits and that will make us a better investor. That will make us a better, you know, overall, you know, person that's trying to enhance our life. Right. And, and so I, I laid the, um, fundamentals there. So to help the readers really start understanding different opportunities out there. Oh, that is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, we look at, we both subscribe to seven principles of prosperity, right? Yep. One of which is C, correct, right? Yeah. See the big picture. Uh, think from a prosperity, was well, number one is think, think from a prosperity right. mindset, but C. So we focus on these, you know, the tree and we missed the whole forest where you've got to learn how to think from a macro perspective. Right. And, and so you can't, and, uh, Kim said this and I, I always say you can't control the economy, but you can control your personal economy, I which is that. your production and consumption as a family. So what Caleb is talking about in the book is how do you do that? How can you be the bank? How can right. you take those principles and apply those to your life to create right. more efficiency, more control, and more velocity. Right. Is that does summarize and, that and, and really at the at the, at the end of the book, mm -hmm. I break down the best vehicles and places to store our money and save it for the future. Mm -hmm. I, sh I I explain how we can take advantage of using our money today without hurting the compound growth. Right. And then and then the last chapter is really the and about the end asset. And what this is nothing I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> is Okay, so you're an entrepreneur listening to this. How does this relate to you? Okay, right. you're someone that's super experienced, or you're nearing retirement, or you're you're an uh, uh, you know employee, or you're some. How does this apply to your life? Right. And I, I this is bold, but I believe the majority, if not every single person listening to this, can apply the principles that you and I know and you and I do in our practice. And um, I think it can change people's lives. I know it can change people's lives, and that's why. I well, that's what the business that are in. Look, for anybody, it takes a time to put their thoughts down on paper. You know, their experiences down on paper. You need to read it. You know, right. uh, uh, I heard somebody told me I think it was General. Somebody said, "But le re leaders are readers." Right? I love that. And so, one of the things that we challenge our clients is: look, you got to read a book a month on money. I will have finished this book. Because he was gracious it. enough to give me the book, yeah. I'll I might have finished it by the time I plane ride home <laughs> from Salt Lake. But it's it's uh, it's it's I always tell people, look, it's your money, right? Right? It ain't Kayla's money. It's not Curtis's money. It's your money. So it can't be more important to us, correct? Than it is to you, right? So you've got to learn to be in. See, some people are afraid of being in control, right? And so part of our mission is to, and I talked about this uh, week before last on our episode where we talked about transformation, is to help people transform from what I call economic childhood, where you're dependent, where people that, are tell you, you can't think, you can't do this, you know, you've got to, uh, 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 you know, give your money to us. You're not smart enough. You don't have the time to temperament or to train to personally manage your own money. That's yeah. basically the message that's out there. That's the, part, the narrative. Whereas we both think two plus two is four. Yeah. And it's not that complicated. And so we want you to become, move you to financial adulthood. I love right? that. That's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, it's not mine. I have no original thoughts, right? That's Dan Sullivan. But the, uh, uh, and, but that means you're more entrepreneur, you're entrepreneur, you're more at least an entrepreneurial thinker. You're learning yeah. how to, uh, you are your best financial advisor. Yeah. You need a guide. That's us. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so we want you to read a book a month on money because guess what? Our discussions will get better. And, and I guess I'll, I'll end with this. And by the way, I just want to say how thankful and grateful I am to just be on this podcast with you. I'm so but, happy to have you. I can't tell but, you. This but, fun. So I, I open the book with just asking why. Mm -hmm. And as cheesy as it may sound, why does this all matter in the first place? Like, 
if if all we do is teach people better ways to be more efficient, grow and control their money, but they don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, it does not matter. And so one of the first things is we just got to own our mission and why we do what we do. Right. And then that can kind of carry on to, okay, why does it matter? Because right. if we have money and we understand how to use it, we can increase, we can do, we can do far greater things. And I've, the people that have truly impacted my life, they've had time freedom, they have financial freedom right. to be able to pour into me. And, and I want to do the same. And that, then this book is one of the areas that, that I want to Yeah, that's do awesome in. because so. you got to, you know, create value in the marketplace because folks, how much money can you make and give away? How much more time can you buy with your family? So it's about freedom. Right. You know, two types of freedom, freedom from and freedom to. Right. Okay. And so, Caleb, tell them where, where can they get your book? Okay. Yes. So, andasset.com. Okay. okay. www.andasset.com. And that's, that's where they can get it. And we're going to be like kind of giving discounts and they can kind of like join the, the, the movement right, as far right, as this right, book. Right. Also go on Amazon and type in the and asset and, uh, it'll leave them a review too, right? You know, this is what I tell people. Okay. Even if it's the worst book in the right. world, I, I want a five star review. You don't have to right, <laughs> just right. lie once in your right, life. Right. No, That's funny. no, but that would truly mean the world because the, the sad reality is reviews and, and like likes. They, don't they, you have a show? I do. Yeah. Yes. So tell them about your podcast. So one of the one of the reasons that I I get to do what I'm doing is I've learned from some incredible mentors, some people that have been so generous with their time and are, are experts in their field. And so I'm like, you know what? What if we could create a sh- a show and it's the Better Wealth with Caleb Williams, okay. Better okay. Wealth podcast with okay. Caleb Williams. Sorry, I'll subscribe. And the whole the whole mission is to go interview people that not only in our wealth space but are entrepreneurs or people that are thinking outside the box. And because I've learned so much from just being able to sit across from them, I want to share that with the world. And we mentioned Nelson Nash. Right. He's actually, he was one of my first interviews. Wow. That and is so, awesome. A, a person that has tremendous impact on, on both of our lives. And, and just like you've been so generous to me, I want you, all your listeners to know if they want to take the and asset and they read it and it makes sense, I'm looking at an advisor that would be incredible. Your practice and what you're teaching is exactly what I'm trying to share with the book. And so it's fun to, it's fun to collaborate, right, but right. I want to promote your business because you're doing, you're doing a great job. very gracious. Thank yeah. you. I so, appreciate that. So yeah, I'm trying and, to help uh, my man out, you know. And right back at you. And so that, uh, so listen, folks, this is, we could do this all day, but we yeah, yeah. got to go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so listen, I want to, uh, thank Caleb again for coming on the show. And I think uh, he dropped value bombs all over the place. So, you know, if you're listening to while you're on a treadmill or something, you need to go back. One of the things you, I want you to see as powerful was that, you know, when he started working, what he learned, you know. And so that is powerful. So if you've got teenagers, you know, get them reading stuff and that kind of stuff. So listen, uh, thanks again. It's been another awesome episode of the Practical Well Show. Make sure you go download Caleb's book, Caleb's book, and uh, listen. We're out. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.